En, uh, Brian. Good morning, Mr. McClay. Good morning, Mr. McClay. Yes, Brian, the, the, I'm not sure whether the chair has spoken to you, but uh, he is committed somewhere, then he has asked me to, to proceed with the meeting. I don't see as well in the meeting. No? Uh, I think he's, he's probably involved with the Section 25 uh, yeah. hearings, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, he said he said he's uh, they've got a commitment with uh, yeah. uh, section twenty five somewhere in yeah. Saudi. Isn't it? Isn't it um, um, Durban? Well, I think oh, he mentioned yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Gauteng, Okay. Yeah, no, another Mutre. Yes. Yeah, uh, I think um, the chairperson cannot just, I mean, uh, dictate to us who must be the chairperson in his absentia because he's there in the chair because the members of the committee, I mean, uh, gave him that money. So now because uh, I want to volunteer to chair this meeting, I don't know whether uh, you you can allow us, I mean, to agree who's going to be uh, chairing today's meeting. Thank you. I, I can second you, uh, Honorable Shalem. Sharing is a serious job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they say they say a change is as good as a holiday, eh? Ah no. Chairperson. Yes, uh, uh, Honorable Khwase. On what? Honorable Shalembe has just raised. Maybe Brian should take us through the process of taking you in as a chairperson or an acting chairperson of this meeting for record keeping sake. Yeah. Yeah, Brian, advice. What is the process? Because the chair is not in the meeting. Um, Mr. Motley, in terms of uh, the procedure, uh, since the chair will not be joining the meeting, we we are we have to elect, in fact, elect an acting chair. You must run that process. Yes, that, that is correct, Mr. Mutley. Uh, perhaps I should take us through the process. Uh, uh, in 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 the absence of the chair, uh, uh, can I have members who a member who nominate uh, the acting chairperson? Brian? Um, uh, Ms. Uh, I, I move that um, Honorable Mutle must chair this uh, meeting. Uh, thank you, Ms. Uh, do we have a seconder? Ms. Lekwasa seconds, Brian. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Do we have any other nominations? Uh, there being no other uh, nominations, uh, Mr. Mutle is here by uh, the, the chairperson. Chap- uh, Thank you, members. Uh, uh, over to you, Mr. Mutle. Th- Thank you very much, uh, Brian. I thought uh, Shalembe will contest. Uh, <laughs> this is a clear indication that uh, uh, this year's election, DA will not contest. No, I wanted to volunteer. Uh, don't count your chickens before they've hatched. Don't count your chickens. <laughs> no, we are, we, are, we are in agreement. We are in agreement. It means you are not going to contest. Whoever we, we bring in those words, you will support. Okay, and on, on a lighter note, uh, uh, honorable members. Uh, yeah. The agenda has been flighted. Uh, I think uh, uh, honorable members are able to access it on their screen uh, without uh, wasting more time. I will uh, then declare this meeting officially open and welcome all of you into this uh, portfolio committee meeting of uh, Wednesday, the 19th of May, uh, which is on visual. 
uh, yeah, we'll then move to the next item, which is uh, apologies. Uh, Brian, can you assist us with that uh, on this item, on the apologies that we have received? Uh, thank you, Acting Chair. Uh, firstly, we have an apology from the chairperson who uh, was unable to attend. He is held up at the Section 25 hearings in Gauteng. Uh, secondly, we have an apology from General Olomisa. Uh, the third apology is from Ms. Mtembu, um, uh, who has a by-election uh, in her constituency. Uh, fourthly, we have an apology from the minister, uh, Minister Mapusa Nagola, uh, who has a cabinet uh, uh, engagement. Uh, fourth, fifthly, we have an apology from Minister uh, Ndabeni Abrams from the Communications and, Te and Digital, Te Digital Technologies Department, who uh, has a cabinet committee meeting. Uh, we also have an apology from the Acting DG of Communications, Ms. Jordan Gianti, who also has an engagement with the Select Committee. Uh, those are all the apologies that we have. Thank you, Acting Chair. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Can we grant them, uh, honorable members, those uh, apologies? Apologies granted, Chair. Seconda. Any seconda? I second. Thank you. Uh, that takes us to item uh, three, which yeah. is... Uh, Chairperson, good morning. Good morning, uh, DM. Chairperson, I'm sorry, much before we move away from this item, I was going to say, uh, I want to put in an apology to be released at 11 o'clock because uh, there is a, an, a, a meeting of all cabinet committees uh, at 11 o'clock, if I could be released at 11. All right, I don't think it's a problem. Your apology is, uh, is noted. We will just indicate when it's time for you to withdraw from the meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are on item three, which is a uh, briefing by DMV on progress regarding amendments uh, to the Military Veterans Act and the Military Veterans Benefit uh, Regulation. Uh, DM. Uh, I'll hand over to you, then you will then introduce the team that uh, uh, you came with, and uh, from there you'll hand over to whoever will be briefing uh, the committee. Over to you, TM. You are still muted. No? Uh, Chair, thank you very much. No, Chair, I do not know who from the department is going to be involved in the presentations today. I do not see the DG in, uh, on my screen, uh, and he has not put in an apology. Um, I do not know. Smakale. Uh, if I may DM, just DM. Yes. My apologies, DM and uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, oh. Good morning. Good morning. Somewhere along the line, I'm struggling to change my identity. Uh, lately, oh. I, uh, it's coming out now as that uh, number, which is ends with a double three eight. Oh. <laughs> my apologies okay. for that. Is is that your first number, General Mukwe? <laughs> Uh, no, 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 Chair. My, mine uh, is not uh, that one. Mine it, it ends with a three double nine. <laughs> that, yeah, thanks. No, thank you very much, uh, DG. Uh, Chair, uh, no, the, the, the department uh, is in attendance. 
sorry for that uh, uh, inconvenience there. I see that the DG has gone underground. Uh, and I hear that by training, the rumor says that the DG is actually <clears throat> a member of the special forces. So now and again do expect surprises from him. Uh, that's on a light note. Uh, DG, good morning, and uh, would you please come in and uh, lead the presentation? Thank you. Uh, thanks, DM, uh, and uh, thanks, uh, Chair. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Arab members. From the department, DM, uh, we've got officials. Yes, Makaling is here with, uh, in the office of the uh, DG. The CFO, Mr. Ndlovu, is here. From the planning side, we've got uh, Rampel, Mr. Rampel, and then Chito. We've got uh, Ms., uh, we've got Onika, and we've also got uh, Ms. Jordan Celeste, who is acting um, director legal. With your permission, uh, DG, I would request therefore that uh, Ms. Jordan, at, uh, acting director legal, uh, does the print it, presentation. Thanks, uh, uh, dear. Thank you very much, uh, DG. Uh, we can proceed. Thank you. Um, good morning, Chair. Good morning, DM. Good morning, all the members. Um, all right, I'm going to be presenting to the Portfolio Committee on Defence and Military Veterans um, the presentation on the amendment of the Military Veterans Act um, and then just have a few words on the regulations as well. Um, I'm not sure if someone's going to reflect the presentation for us, please. Um, otherwise, I'll just speak to the one I've got. Yeah, we are, uh, who's uh, loading the presentation? Is it on it? We are waiting for you to, to load the presentation. So please open the screen, but uh, uh, we don't see any Okay, on, on my side, it is fully projected, unless if members are affected. Yeah, I'm not sure. I can ask members. On my side, it's not uh, projected. Is it, uh, members, are you able to see the presentation on your side? No, Chair. Not yet, Chair. Uh, yeah, it, the screen that appears on our side uh, still uh, shows the three presentations that uh, we have opened on... Uh, Uh, are you a prime? Do you have, uh, it appears to be frozen on my side. Let me just work on my technical issues. Okay, let's, let's check with Brian. Do you have the, the presentation on your side so that you can also uh, try and ask? I have the presentation. I, I, will, in... I will share it from my side, uh, Chair. Okay. Yeah, there, there you go. Uh, yeah, there you go. You may proceed. Uh... Uh, with Ms. Jordan. Thank you very much. Um, and next slide, please. 
All right, the presentation outline, it's the purpose for the amendment. We're going to be looking at the challenges experience, the consultative process, works, developments up to date, and the way going forward, and then the legislative program. Next slide, please. The purpose for the amendment is to remedy the ambiguities and the disparities that appear in the Act as it is. And we're also going to be looking at to address the challenges that arise with the dispensing of um, the Section 1 benefits. And that is the reason for and the purpose for the amendment. Next slide, please. The amendment to the Act is a necessity and it's critical due to the challenges that have been experienced in dispensing the different benefits in Section 1 um, 5 one of the Act. Some of the challenges that we've been looking at and that we've um, are busy addressing is the definition of a military veteran. Um, we have felt that the definition needs to be scrutinized and the wording thereof needs to be uh, re-looked as well. Um, we also need to look at the means test to see whether it's feasible. Should we have a means test? Should we not have a means test in our Act? Um, which obviously qualifies or disqualifies specific persons from getting the benefits. And then we have looked at the inclusion of dependents and we're considering that to include our spouses and dependents in receiving all the benefits um, that the military veteran is also receiving. And next slide. All right, the consultative process that we followed right throughout the amendment process, it's very important for us to follow a consultative process and embark on consulting the stakeholders um, and all interested parties internally and externally to ensure that we receive all the process, all the inputs and comments from these parties um, because that is very important throughout the amendment to the bill. The bill was circulated to the recognized military veterans associations on the 25th of March so that we could obtain the inputs and the comments. We also circulated the bill to the government departments on the 6th of April, and we had a closing date of the 28th of April. The departments that we circulated the bill to was the Department of Health, Department of Basic Education, Higher Education and Training, Social Development, Human Settlements, Sports, Arts and Culture, and then as well as the Department of Defence, including the DFCS and the Reserve Force Council. Um, up to, to date, and on the 28th of April, we only received inputs from the Department of Basic Education who actually came to consult with us. We are just awaiting their written inputs. And then we received inputs from the CMBO and then also from the Ex-Political Prisoners Association. Um, unfortunately, we haven't received any further inputs from any government departments or any of the other military veterans associations. So we have um, taken it upon ourselves to send emails to them, to remind them about the inputs that are awaited from them and to give them further opportunity to input and to give comments because these are very important to this whole process. So we are giving some extra extended time to receive these inputs. The work streams. The presidential task team has established seven work streams of which one is the legislative work stream. This work stream consists of Mr. T. Matumi, who is the Special Advisor to the Minister of Defence and Military Veterans. Um, it's Lieutenant Colonel K. Meshechu from the Defence Force Legal Services, and then, of course, myself. We are still awaiting a representative from the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development. However, we haven't received a nomination there yet. Um, next slide, please. Now we're going to be looking at the developments to date. All right, we started with the internal um, consultation process, which of course we've said done, but we are, we are giving further extension there. The bill was sent to DPME for signing off on this initial SAS report, which we've received the certificate for. Our next step is that we had sent the bill to Chief State Law Advisor for pre-certification. However, um, the pre-certification is now pending the receipt of all the inputs and comments, because obviously this would have an effect on what is in the bill and what we need to maybe still incorporate. So once we've sat and we've incorporated and consolidated all the inputs, then um, Oxlo will do their pre-certification. Um, then secondly, uh, the next step was that we presented to COD on the 14th of April, 2021. Next slide, please. 
All right, once the receipt of all the inputs and comments were expected on the 28th of April. As I did mention previously, we only received um, inputs from Department of Basic Education, CMBO, and the Ex-Political Prisoners Association. We are giving further extension, and obviously because of that, the timelines that you see here will obviously have to be amended because the consideration and incorporation of all these inputs we said end of May. However, we shall <clears throat> obviously go a bit into June to finalise on this. The approval of the bill to be gazetted for public partition, participation shall also take place once we've incorporated all these inputs. Then the submission to be finalised and submitted, which will then be sent to the Minister of Defence and Military Veterans for final approval. Um, just a little bit down, please, and so I can just see the bottom of the slide. Um, oh, well, never mind. Okay, what, what happens is we're going to be, the bill will be tabled at the cluster meetings. We were looking at June 2021. We're hoping to still be able to do it in that um, period, but it might have to move on a few days because of the delay in receiving the inputs. The way forward. Once the bill is presented to the cluster meetings, then the timelines for further steps leading to the tabling um, in Parliament, those dates will then be determined. However, we are attempting to um, table in Cabinet by July and table in Parliament by August 2021 20, soonest. Um, next slide, please. The legislative program. In order for a bill to be tabled in Parliament, the legislative program must be received from the Minister's office. It must be completed and submitted. The amendment bill for DNB had not been approved for tabling in 2021. However, because of the urgency of amending our Act and the critical factors that cause all the challenges that we are um, experiencing in dispensing the benefits, it's very important that we do actually table the bill in 2021 and have it approved eventually. Um, a motivation was prepared by Mr. Matsumi, who is the special advisor to the minister, and it was submitted to the Minister of Defence and Military Veterans, who will then um, further process it to the leaders of the government business to indicate the reasons for the urgency of having the amendment tabled in 2021. Um, all right, then I just from yeah, I just want to add on that the regulations we have started considering and consulting internally on the regulations, looking at the means tests, looking at what the criteria is and um, some of the specific issues there. And we have a lot of challenges in the regulations as well. However, we've put these on hold so that we can just um, get the act up and running, you know, have uh, tabled in Parliament, then we will continue because it is actually that um, because the act, the, the, the regulations are promulgated in line with the act, we first have to finalise on the act, then we will, but we are on the sideline, we are looking at getting inputs for the regulations. So the regulations will eventually also be amended. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh for the presentation, uh, I think uh, I'll allow honorable members to engage uh, with this presentation. This one, uh, is that okay, uh, honorable members? Captain. Uh, uh, Honourable uh, Shalembe, if uh, just before you, you you take the platform, Honourable Shalembe, uh, Honourable Shalembe, uh, uh, as well as uh, Ms. Jordan and, uh, and uh, General Mukwebi. Yeah, you may you may uh, take the platform, Honourable Shalembe. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. Um, Chairperson, I'm just checking uh, if maybe they can give a uh, clarity because, well, the, the issue of uh, military uh, veterans associations. Uh, because we don't want maybe at a later stage to have people who will, who will say they were not, I mean, uh, informed of the process. Uh, I'm checking um, 
when it comes to, I mean, uh, inviting them to participate, how it was done, was it sort of like maybe sending emails or, I mean, um, something was sent uh, to those uh, structures and they signed a receipt of uh, those invitations. Uh, Chairperson, you remember that um, when you speak of these associations, one must ask, I mean, uh, how many um, associations do we have? I once uh, asked that question and then I was told about uh, some. We had, I mean, an issue, I think is the one that even led to the office of uh, president or deputy president where military veterans had to leave us as a portfolio and decide to go to the office of the president. Now, like the issue of, I mean, at the South African uh, Cape Call, who, I mean, uh, have been complaining a lot about their, I mean, recogn recognition by uh, the department. Now, if maybe a clarity can be given, maybe to mention who are those military veterans that are being invi invited to participate I think also, Jefferson, I mean, Jefferson, you remember the issue of um, the SDUs like and the SPUs, those uh, structures, I don't know where, that, where do they fall in that case? Because Jefferson, I think we must do the right thing as they say, they will be sort of a means test, but we must know exactly, I mean, in that process, how is their role? How are they getting invites to ensure that anyway, they don't complain uh, at a later stage? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Shalembe. Uh, I just want to check if there is any other input. Chair. Yes, uh, is it Honorable Bukas? Yes, Chair. Can yes. I, Chair? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Chair, maybe uh, I, I, I'm a bit slow this morning, but um, uh, one of the or the challenges, uh, one of the challenges is the the uh, inclusion of dependents and the definition of a military veteran. I I just want to know, Che, why is it still a challenge? Can maybe she can, can elaborate more on that? Why is it still a challenge? And then, Che, my second one is if we look at the either at the slow interactions of the stakeholders, because uh, the closing date was supposed was the 28th of April and, and there was extension. And it's only, I think, uh, education and the, and the, what is this, the police, pres the prisoners or what, who, who gave inputs. How are they planning or is there a process that they start for them to take part? Thank you, Chair, for the other uh, stakeholders. Thank you, Honorable uh, Bukas. Uh, maybe before I, I hand over to uh, the team uh, led by uh, the DM and uh, General Mukwebi, uh, also pose a, a clarity seeking question around, uh, around these challenges that they have raised. And I think, uh, Honorable. Uh, uh, Bukas has also raised a, a concern around that. But uh, maybe firstly, if you can uh, quantify to us, uh, maybe in terms of percentage, if you were to give us a percentage of the progress that we have made in terms of uh, amending this uh, uh, particular bill, you, you would confidently say you are at what percentage? because uh, concert, well, I've seen some of the things have been done, uh, but uh, we are more concerned about uh, uh, the challenges that you are experiencing because uh, uh, we are of the view that uh, the reason uh, for igniting the process of amendment of the bill uh, was necessitated by uh, the definition of a, a military veteran, uh, as well as uh, 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 beneficiaries uh, that must benefit in case in case uh, the 
the dependence of the beneficiary in case the beneficiary is not there, uh, he has deceased. Uh, uh, those are some of the things that uh, actually uh, resulted in the process being started o o over again. Uh, particularly on the definition of a military veteran. So what is the challenge that you are experiencing in terms of addressing that particular uh, challenge that we have, uh, we have uh, identified? And uh, the process is meant to address that particular uh, challenge. Uh, if you can clarify that, uh, uh, and we'll, we'll take it from there. Uh, I'm not sure, General Mkwebi, it will be you uh, or will, it will be uh, Ms. Jordan who will be taking these questions. Thank you. Over to you. Thanks, uh, Honorable Chair. I will allow Ms. Jordan to take uh, the responses, but uh, if there's any shortcoming, uh, Ms. Jordan will just uh, refer to me, then I'll take whatever you are not in a position to respond. Thanks, Chair. Ms. Jordan. Thank you. Um, first of all, the clarity with regard to the associations um, and the participation. What we did was we had formal letters that were signed by our ADG, and we had sent out these letters together with the bill and the current act through SAMVA. We had sent it to SAMVA and requested them to please send it to all the associations because as we were made aware was that the associations were having the NECs, and then this would be the perfect um point where they can then make the input. So it was all done through Samba and they confirmed that they'd sent it to all the associations. The only challenge they had was that they um, had a problem with the SACC MVA who they didn't send the bill to. So from our side, from our officer's side, we sent it to the SACC MVA by ourselves to their SG um, for their inputs. Um, that was done by email. Um, for the departments, the government departments, also former letters were written, signed by DG, and it was sent out. We communicated with the departments to determine who the DG would be so that we could get it, make, ensure that we send it to the correct email addresses. So that process was followed, and for the um, follow-up that we're making, we will communicate with the same people who received the bills um, the first time. Then um, the challenges on the inclusion of dependents, um, the defin definition of a military veteran. Um, yes, we have throughout um, daily tasks and stuff realized and have received complaints um, from different sources on the definition of a military veteran and who it includes and who it doesn't include. And the fact that some groups are being excluded from a definition where they actually should be qualifying. So we said that we should maybe just relook the wording to see what we can do to ensure that everybody who fits the definition of a military veteran is in fact included and that nobody excluded for some reason or another or because of the specific wording. So it's about interpretation of this definition. Um, for the inclusion of the de dependents, we've had to scrutinize and see how we can bring this, the, the dependents in because ultimately they don't qualify for benefits like honoring and memorialization, obviously. But however, we are considering to include them uh, into the def to, to receive the benefits uh, because we have found that it's, it seems to be the disparities are there and the problems that we're experiencing with giving benefits to a military veteran where his family, his wife and his children are suffering because they cannot afford any mil um, medical health and things like that. So there we've got, through ex dispensing the benefits, we've picked up on all these disparities and the disadvantage that, you know, and the prejudice that the dependents are going through. And that has, you know, obviously caused us to reconsider and to think, you know, we need to put them in. The percentage, um, what one of the questions was about the percentage of the amendment bill and where we are. I'd say at this stage, the percentage would be, I think it would be fair to say 50%. Um, yes. Um, it's difficult to say because, you know, there's every time... With the fast tracking of the bill, we find that there's extra steps that we need to bring in. But I think it's safe to say we're at about 50% of the way. Um, yes, I think I hope I've answered all the questions. General Webb, you might want to assist me if there's something I haven't answered or addressed, please. 
Thanks, uh, Celeste. Uh, Honorable Chair, I think the issue of the definition, it's uh, the question, what was the intent of the legislator in terms of coming up with the issue of military veterans and uh, trying to put that? Now, then the understanding is that uh, those who were in the main, in the liberation uh, formations, uh, who have suffered uh, in terms of they foregone their own development, they, they were not there. That means the non-statutory forces, and also the those who were in the statutory forces. The definition covers everybody. What we have not done probably is to say, in terms of dispensing this benefit, how then do we manage that? That means we need to look at the issue of categorizing, categorizing these military veterans in the process of defining them for the purposes of the benefits. Because obviously they won't be, and they are not at the same level in terms of uh, their destitution. To the issue of the military skills development systems, that means the MSDS, the young ones who come into the defense force finish after two years training, then they are not taken on board by the defense force and they are not part of the reserve force, then they also qualify. Now that's at the age of 20, they become military veterans. Now the question is, is that the intention of government to include these young ones at the age of 20 as military veterans for them to access all what is available? This is why we speak therefore of a challenge at uh, making sure that we categorize them uh, correctly. Also, some of the very same young ones register as reserve force members. Then they stay up for almost a year, two years without being called up. But then they are not supposed to benefit out of this arrangement in terms of being military because they are still in service. So these are the issues, Chair, when we talk of a definition and we're trying to at least address that. I just wanted at least to expand a bit on that one, but the rest, I think I will stop at this chair. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, uh, General Mukwebi. You, you gave uh, clarity. I think uh, I see the hand of uh, Honorable Shalembe. Do you want to make a follow-up or was your hand raised before? No, no, just a follow-up uh, before you come into person. No, Chairperson, uh, I didn't. I didn't hear. I mean, was if we speak of uh, the dependents, well, I mean, they, I can hear they speak of wives and uh, children, but there was an issue that was raised by the committee um, um, previously that um, what happened in the case uh, where I mean, um, in the regard, uh, Chairperson. Thank you. Yeah, over to you, uh, General Mukwebe. Th thank you, thank you, Chair. The issue of uh, wives being more than one, uh, I think uh, there is a question of uh, recognition of the customary law. And therefore, when people then are submitted, I suppose they would be look at that in terms of uh, the proof and evidence of how these people came about to be at least uh, wives of one person. I would all that, that's now speaking from my understanding of the customary law and the recognition of those as dependent. But I have not come across um, subject to correction of that actual um, situation on the ground. Then it was just a question of confirming the actual facts, but I've not come across it. Thanks, sir. Uh, are, you, are you satisfied, uh, Honorable Shalemba? No, I'm okay because he's saying that uh, it's just waiting uh, for confirmation. So for now, it means uh, there is need, I mean, uh, to investigate on that matter to ensure 
because it will happen uh, maybe for now. But in case, I mean, it happens, we don't want to come back and say, let us relook, I mean, uh, to the legislation. But it's better that, I mean, this is confirmed now. So, that, I mean, uh, we know that uh, the process was followed and they were involved in that case. Because those people, if you speak of polygamy, I mean, if it's something that has not been, uh, they have not come across, it means now is something that is silent. And I will appreciate, uh, as he says, it's a matter of conf confirmation. Once once that has been confirmed, then I'll be happy. Thank you. Yeah, th th thank you very much, uh, Honorable Shalembe. Uh, I think we have, uh, I'm not seeing any hand. I'm not sure if uh, the DM, you've got an input to make on the item before we move to the next one. Or yes, already you would No, Chair, thank you very much. No, I, Chair, I don't have much to, to, to say really on this uh, presentation. Uh, suffice to uh, draw the attention of the committee to the uh, awareness that um, the content of the amendments uh, obviously can only be consolidated and finalized when the responses from the other departments of government have been submitted, i.e. Um, after which uh, we can then come back to the committee, the oversight committee to come and present now the content issues of this uh, amendment bill in order for the committee to ventilate uh, views, its views around content issues, including what do you, uh, what has just been referred to now. Uh, the presentation we have uh, uh, entertained now, uh, primarily points to the process where the bill is at now, but uh, we still need to come back for content issues in my, in my understanding. The, and that of course then uh, gives a sense of how much uh, work has been, ground has been covered, the point that you were raising yourself, Chair, about what percentage would we say uh, the work done constitute? Um, we, we, that is where we are at the moment. We must get in the submissions from the other de government departments because uh, that process assists to get from sister departments views as to whether there is anything in what we are contemplating that uh, is not aligned with uh, <clears throat> the mandates uh, of uh, other government departments or policies of the other government departments, just to show that there is an alignment. The other point, of course, is that uh, with respect to um, the involvement or participation of military veterans in this uh, uh, dialogue around the, the proposed amendments, the, the South African Cape Corps, the SACC, is uh, part of the military veterans associations that are uh, recognized, and it would have been one of those that received correspondence from the department on the matter. But uh, be aware that we have the other, there's a grouping called the KDU, the, the COI Defense, the Coison Defense Unit. Uh, that's a different matter. Um, we know <clears throat> now as the oversight committee here that uh, uh, they did, uh, you know, uh, present their case, uh, but uh, their case is still not, uh, you know, resolved. They have no uh, recognition at this point as we're talking on the basis, at least of their submission, uh, even the chances of them 
been recognized the way they are explaining themselves are very you know slim now that is sdus sdus are a different uh, matter uh, honorable members as far as the department and the ministry is concerned sdus are not military veterans however we must not be misunderstood to be suggesting that sdus do not uh, deserve attention uh, by government and that uh, there be a framework that uh, government uh, you know establishes on how to assist self defense units uh, that is one of the issues we are going to have to discuss when we discuss uh, the white paper the policy around our military veterans uh, as to uh, how do we deal with SDUs? But SDUs are not military veterans by definition. Um, the there is a, yeah no I think the other issues can always be dealt with later. Uh, Chair, thank you very much. That's what I wanted to to say. Yeah, th th thank you very much, uh, DM, uh, for that, those inputs. I think we, we will uh, then close that item on that note and then move to, to the next item, uh, which is uh, uh, CETA intervention uh, to assist the DMV to cleanse their, their database. I'm not sure who will uh, then be able to take us through that uh, uh, particular item because we have received so many apologies uh, from communications department. Uh, but I see there's a DDG uh, Masholo. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Are you the one who will be taking us through, uh, uh, sir? Uh, th thank you, thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, good morning, uh, members of the, the committee. Uh, good morning, uh, DM. Uh, good morning. My name is Mlindi Mashologu. Uh, it's not Mashologu, Chair. Uh, Mashologu, Chair, it's Mashologu. Uh, it's a it's a trosa it's a trosa name. Verifying, <laughs> don't uh, yeah. Yes, uh, chairperson. Uh, chair, uh, chair, chair, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, uh, Mr. Mashologu. Uh, I'm sorry, chair. Chair, yes, I was yes. just looking at my time that uh, I've got ten minutes to go into the uh, cabinet uh, all committees meeting. And uh, that may happen in the middle of this presentation. I did uh, uh, want to be uh, in the meeting to, uh, of this uh, presentation, but it is clear that uh, I'm going to have to move in the middle of the, of the presentation. If Chair could just uh, you know, grant me the permission to step down. Yeah, you may silently withdraw when you, it's necessary for you to do so. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you may you may proceed, uh, uh, DDG Marshalog. Thank you, thank thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, Chair, uh, thank you very much for, for this opportunity for for the department and CETA to present uh, the integrated database management system to the committee. Uh, as I indicated, my name is um, Lindy Mashalogo uh, from uh, DDG, responsible for Information Society and Capacity Development. I also do the oversight on CETA. So with me, I do have uh, Mr. Totiwe, who's coming from our SOE oversight branch. And we do have Ms. Anthony as well, uh, who is our parliamentary liaison. And uh, on the CETA side, we have a team that is led by Mr. Kaysen. Uh, who is the executive caretaker? Mr. Case uh, is going to introduce uh, his team, and uh, his team is going to take us through the the presentation. Thank you, Chair. Over to you, Mr. Case. Um, thank you, Honorable Chair, and thank you, DM, and and thank you, Honorable Members, and 
and also the the team from from the CPT. Uh, perhaps uh, to to use the five minutes before the the, the deputy minister leaves, um, we will have one of our executives to to do the details presentation. But but however, the main the main thing we the message that we wish to give. Uh, in line with the meetings and the discussions that we have had with the acting DG of military veterans, we are then working on ensuring that the solution, including the clean database, um, possibly is implemented in this financial year. We will take you through in terms of where we are, in terms of the solutions, the development of the solutions, but also including the Honorable DM, Honorable Chair members. What has happened up to now that has caused this delay? Um, but also we will indicate the commitment that both myself and the acting DG we wish to put in place to ensure that there are monthly governance meetings checked by both of us to ensure that now we do not talk of how data can assist or we do not talk of uh, on one part, cleaning the database, putting up your registration solution, but we are able to see the end-to-end -end solution implemented uh, before the end of this year. We are aware of the financial challenges that military veterans might have, but we will look into that because technically, uh, implementation of the solution is not something that is difficult to do, but the team then chair, um, will, will, will be able to talk to that and indicate what is it that we need to do. I thought before I introduce members and the DM wishes to leave in a minute or so, at least I can explain that broader key message of what is it that we will be presenting today. The executive for consulting, uh, Mr. Dutula Senye, will then be leading us on the presentation. I will come at the end um, to re-emphasize specific points that are related um, to the request that we have received from military veterans. I do have uh, honorable chair other executives in the room, including the executive responsible for systems development, Mr. Simon Sangani is here. I have my stakeholder relationship uh, head of department or DDG, uh, Mr. Kazikazi, who is also here, to ensure that we will smoothen and manage the relations uh, between us also and military veterans so that we can assist them in delivering on their mandate. Same as our parliamentary liaison officer um, is also in the room, uh, Ms. Tanya Abraham. So that's the team uh, chair. And that is here, but to manage time, I will now chair hand over then uh, to Mr. Tutula Senior to take us through the slide. If uh, you can then uh, make them on presentation mode um, so that we so that all members can see the slides better. Uh, if you do allow me, chair, then I will allow uh, Mr. Senior to take us through, through the slide. Uh, thank you, chair. Uh, thank you very much, uh, EC. Uh, I hope I'm audible enough. And uh, I hope that uh, I've got this now in the presentation mode that everyone can see. Uh, just very quickly then, uh, my name is Intutule, as introduced, uh, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Chair, for the opportunity. The DM, I know you're moving out. The honorable members, uh, DMVDG, uh, uh, with whom we've obviously been working very, very hard in the last couple of months uh, on this. Um, I will then quickly take you through a very brief uh, presentation on the issues that uh, have been raised. Uh, and I think it's important actually, uh, Chair, that uh, the presentation is happening on the back of a very critical discussion that uh, happened. Uh, the first presentation that uh, we have listened to where we started looking at issues of definitions, you know, categorization, and all of those issues, because those are very critical when you now develop a system, because you wanna make sure that uh, all of those issues are clear, all those strategic and critical issues are cleared, because what then the system will do will be to then be able to give back uh, exactly the definitions as have been given and so forth. And I guess 
That is why also the issue around the cleansing of the data was such a central issue in the process of developing uh, the system. So let me let me run through uh, the, the slides. Uh, this is just the context in terms of what we will go through. Um, and maybe just to start off with, uh, we thought it was important, and I and I know that some of the members have already, uh, you know, uh, listened to the presentation before because this is not the first time that uh, this engagement is happening. But just to take you through how we would then engage a CETA, you know, through the CETA Act and the work that we do. So we will obviously have a service uh, description that we'll go through with a client, a client department in this regard, DMV, to then look at the various services that uh, we can then be able to provide. We will then uh, put that down into a business agreement that will then be able to, um, you know, define for us you know, the various mandatory services that we will then be providing. Uh, in this regard, with DMV, we signed our business agreement in 2012, so it's been in place uh, for quite some time. And then, of course, you will then go uh, further to define the various services that you need to provide. And that is where the primary, you know, service level agreement would then come in to then talk to general service conditions. And if there are any special conditions that are client specific, to then look at that and agree on issues of governance as well. And then at the at the at the at the very uh, molecular level, you will then get into your annexures, which then gets into proper definition of those services, service categories and, and definitions. You know how the, the various service elements that you will be looking at, the costing as well as the pricing of all of this. So this is a a document that then uh, very granularly uh, uh, defined. Uh, the, the services that uh, we are then looking at and where penalties are involved, it will then also include, you know, penalties uh, for either party, you know, if uh, they then uh, do not uh, or reneach on commitments that have been made. And then just moving forward, so what we thought when we got the mandate for the presentation, we thought the focus here is the IDMS, but then we were asked to maybe look at the call center as well. And so what I might want to do so that we get straight into the IDMS is to perhaps talk about the call center, two slides of call center at the end, but rather go into the, 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 the critical issue that the meeting is really uh, all about, uh, Chair. So uh, just in terms of the quick uh, background to the, to the project, uh, the request, Chair, uh, was that we would develop a very credible and secure as well as re a reliable integrated uh, 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 data management system or the EDMV as, as we call it. Uh, it consists of about 14 e-services. I will outline that just now. One e-registration service as well as 13 benefits that are there. And as we continue to discuss, we do look at those benefits to prioritize and also look at whether there are new requirements that we need to then factor Factor E, and, and all of this then needed to be integrated both with internal as well as uh, external other systems, be them home affairs or national treasury, and, and all of the other systems that we feel are important in uh, in, in in making sure that uh, you know the, the quality of the work that we do. So we commenced the project in 2017, so that's quite some time, uh, three to four years. And the question might be, but you know, why are we still doing this? Uh, so we started in 2017. Of course, there's been quite a number of challenges. And I think as the discussion earlier on was happening, uh, one begins to also understand, therefore, that whilst there are all these definition issues and all the other discussions about who is a military veteran and what are the benefits and how do we go about and all of that, that means that uh, you will then also have some challenges with the system that now has to help you regulate you know, those uh, strategic issues that you're talking to. And so we've had a number of those uh, to and fro's to a point where in January of 2019, Chair, the project had to be put on hold, uh, only to be resuscitated later in September of 2020. You know, uh, and, and that is now the point that the EC was referencing as well, where he started, we started getting also the EC at that level and the DG to then discuss the issues in terms of uh, how do we move forward with this important uh, uh, IDMS uh, or IDM uh, system that we needed to do. 
So the project was then resuscitated. And since then, we've had a number of uh, workshops uh, with the colleagues. There's also been quite a number of changes, um, especially within the DMV. I think we're pretty much working with a, a fairly new team uh, over there, but we're excited about uh, you know, the progress that has been made to date. So part of that, the workshop, the last workshop that we had was to then look into uh, uh, signing off on the governance issues, agreeing on the, the very critical issue that also really delayed the process was signing this user requirement specification uh, because it wasn't clear at the time. And so there was there was reluctance to sign that off. And so, 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 so those are the things that as we now get into this iteration of engagement that we started looking at, looking at your, uh, your technical solution design, the project plans, the timelines, you know, the scheduling, uh, as well as the resourcing, you know, the resources that are required uh, on the project. So, so we're making very good progress uh, on, 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 that, on that front. And of course, then there was this issue around uh, data cleansing. As I said, that uh, was quite a, an elephant in the room. Uh, we, have, we, have, we have then since agreed that uh, the data cleansing responsibility will then sit with, uh, with the department, with the DMV, uh, to make sure that then we get the clean data that goes into the system. We really would want to make sure that the clean data gets into, into the system because, you know, as we say, garbage in, garbage out. So if we bring in uh, uh, data that is not clean into the system, the system will then still give back to us uh, results that are not clean. So, so if we've agreed on that, that, that will be the case and we will be able to assist, therefore, in making sure that that happens. So I just wanted to give that background quickly. Uh, before then, I move into this slide that really gives us the design and the scope of the work that we are doing. So I've spoken about e-registration. If you look on top uh, uh, over here, if you can see my mouse, uh, uh, my Tessa, um, uh, we've got the registration over there as one of those. And then of course, the 13 uh, of, the, of the benefits uh, that we're talking about. And as I said, some of these things come in and out. Uh, for example, we've got transport and pension uh, over here. Uh, that module that uh, also was, was further down, we've had to push it up. Uh, also looking into the APP of the DMV, as well as uh, issues that had come out of the presidential task team uh, chair that you referenced uh, shortly uh, earlier. So, so these are all then the, the, those e-services or the modules that we provide. There was talk just uh, now shortly, I think from the DM, around uh, the, the skilling uh, benefits and all of that. So training and skilling benefits also over there. So essentially what we're looking at here is that all the light green is the work that is already in progress. Remember, like I said, we started the work uh, much earlier on in 2017. Uh, we had to come to a point where there was a high task. We had to, to stop and then resume. So we've now gone back to the work that was done and re-looked re at that. Hence, you know, it's, it's quicker and easier to then uh, get going with, uh, with the various modules uh, as we've got them up there. So those are the ones that are in progress. These are the ones that have started already before, um, but now we, have, we, have not, we are now moving into a phase where we would want to then look at them and juxtapose them, the new requirements and the changes that uh, the DMV would want uh, to look at. So we've started all of this work with all of this up. Below here is just the DMV profile over there, as well as the benefit management system. The system over here sits on our e-government uh, platform. And the, and, the, and the importance of that is that our e-government platform has got all the security measures that have been built into that in terms of you know, authentication, authorization, making sure that uh, you've got the users that uh, uh, can only be uh, or can only see certain aspects of the system depending on their definition and all of that. So, so, so that is that is the, the, the very core of the, the base of the of the design uh, that we that we looked at. If you look uh, over here on your right, uh, those are the common components of that eGov platform. You know that will you know your notifications, your workflow that will then also enable that uh, level of integration. Uh, for us with other systems, but also ensure that the security level. So in terms of the data, for example, we say that uh, as a module there of migration, that we've got disparate uh, you know, data through the various sources of data, and it's important, therefore, that we then migrate that uh, 
into 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 the application, and that's where issues of data cleansing come in. I do not want to get too much here because it can be very technical, but this is just the, the view, uh, the design uh, in terms of the scope. And in fact, as we move into the next slide, that then begins to come to the various benefits of the of the solution chair. Uh, I think I think most important is, is is the fact that we are looking into uh, digital centralization of the of this uh, 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 IGMS, uh, you know, records. This is a central uh, repository that will make it easier. Uh, that instead of all these disparate sources of data that sits all over the place, that now you've got a, a common centralized uh, point uh, that uh, you can tap into as a repository and be able to to access you know the various benefits and all of that. Uh, this also provides an online communication uh, to beneficiaries for a digital service that depending, it doesn't matter where the beneficiaries are sitting, but that they will then be able through this online platform be able to engage and look into the benefits and all sorts of uh, services that are, that are, that are due to them. Uh, I spoke about the, the clean data that needs to be migrated to the system and that uh, the department is then looking at that uh, to make sure that uh, we've got clean uh, data, you know, that then takes focus on some of the definitions that uh, we've been talking about earlier on, to make sure that we input very clean data uh, into, into the system. Um, and then, of course, the integration uh, with internal and external, um, you know, systems. You know, like I said, it could be DHA as in Home Affairs or National Treasury or DPSA per cell systems, if you want to then be able to, 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 to check uh, if people are, are getting a salary elsewhere or if they are alive, you know, because sometimes we have uh, the disease that are still beneficiaries and all of that. So that would then be able to help with that. And for that to happen, obviously, uh, the DMV will then have to get into various uh, memoranda of understanding uh, uh, that will allow for data sharing with uh, with this department. And I understand already talking to colleagues at DMV that uh, those MOUs are already in existence and therefore as we move into the integration, then it becomes very easy for us to then be able to do that. And then of course, we are then able to provide uh, the requisite maintenance uh, onto, onto the system as well. This is just some of the benefits that I wanted to talk to. In, in terms of the of the of the approach, um, I, we thought it was important that we talk to the approach because um, uh, you know we we've had this process running and then it had to stop because of a whole number of disagreements and all of that. But we are now at the point where we have agreed on governance processes. Uh, we are now um, uh, have agreed on timelines, project uh, timelines, and all of that commitments for sign off. Uh, of uh, of the of the of the of the user requirements and, and all of these things. So I think as a team we have started jailing um, so that we can then move forward uh, as a as a single unit and be able to deliver uh, to the advantage of uh, or to the benefit of of our military uh, uh, veterans. And we we now engage on a weekly basis uh, uh, with the, the colleagues with the, the governance in terms of uh, uh, steering committees. Uh, to make sure that issues are escalated timelessly, uh, and on all of these issues again, then escalate into uh, the executive caretaker as well as the as the DG, uh, just to make sure that uh, we are on track. And that is why then we agreed that uh, it's important because if you look at um, the timelines that we we were looking at, because of the delays that are there either in sign-offs and all of that, we were looking at a, a slightly prolonged timeline. But from the discussions that we have had since we resumed the project in September, uh, we have now agreed that all this wastage in between will then be you know, uh, dealt with and we will be more efficient. And therefore we can then commit that we can deliver all of this uh, 13 benefits still within this uh, financial year. Uh, and, and so we had to have a very tight uh, schedule with uh, dependencies, if we put dependencies on the, on the DMV, to make sure that we can deliver on those, that we can escalate issues uh, in good time. And, and, and so we have started with that process. As you can see, uh, on top, we've got the, 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 the modules in terms of planning, requirements, analysis, and all of that. So the work is really moving uh, very, very fast, uh, as, as you can see, 
and we are we are very positive that we should be able to finish all of this uh, within this financial year with commitments from both uh, you know CETA uh, as well as the DMV teams that are working on this to make sure that uh, we can we can then be able to deliver on those. So as and when these requirements on the left, uh, the modules uh, uh, change, uh, or if there are you know uh, alterations and all of that, we are then able to do those and make sure that uh, the, the IGMS then caters uh, for, for, for those two. Um, and, and there was then a request to, to look into, into costing and, and financials so that there's an understanding of what has been paid and so forth. So, so where we are here, we then had said, CETA will continue to then do uh, an investment uh, in the development of the, of the system uh, until uh, uh, we come to a point where we now have signed a slide, which we have also agreed to, that uh, we will then get uh, this service level agreement signed uh, between us so that we can then be able to uh, uh, look into uh, the software uh, as a service, you know, providing uh, this solution as a software as a service where it would just be issues of your uh, recurring or ongoing, you know, uh, costs. Uh, that are being paid for as we consume uh, the services from a secure CETA uh, uh, environment. So, so in terms of the cost and financials, that's where we are. I think we've got an understanding. And the, one of the issues was then to say, it is important, therefore, that the slide is signed so that we can then be able to expedite the process. And these are just some of those things that uh, have just been taking some time, but we have now agreed that we should be able to get those things going uh, as well. So I think in a nutshell, uh, in terms of the IDMS uh, chair, that, that, that will be that. Um, like I said, I was then also asked to look into the call center uh, because it's also then providing the service, but it's very brief uh, so that I do not then uh, confuse the members. Uh, we then support the call center from CETA side. We support from the technology side of things as well as some of the prof uh, professional services in terms of making sure that uh, the service delivery from DMV to DMV uh, clients uh, or, or, or beneficiaries uh, is, is, is sound and, and of quality. So, so, so that's, that's really what we do. We, we, if you look at what the role of the DMV uh, will be in, the, in terms of the call center, once we've provided the technology and the know-how, uh, they will then make sure that they are responsible for the management of the service uh, to the customers, which is the beneficiaries. And then they can de then report, uh, you know, all the system and telephony related challenges to us uh, to make sure that uh, we can deal with those. But we are happy with this project because it has really been running very, very smoothly. There's not been any challenges in terms of, uh, you know, the uptimes and all of that. For us is to make sure that, of course, we maintain the, the uptime and that the support and maintenance of the system is always in place. And as you can see over here, we were then asked to say, can you then also show the members how we are doing, you know, from uh, for a period of time within a year, in terms of what we have committed to, in terms of the agreed service level agreement uh, versus where the level of uh, performance of the, of the three aspects of the call center. And, and I'm happy uh, that the members can see uh, we have agreed, for example, for the telephony uh, server availability that it should be 95%. That's what we signed there. But you can see over here the blue lines we're already sitting largely at 100% and less than 99.6. So overperforming in terms of uh, the performance levels. If you look into the reporting platforms, the availability, we're sitting at 90% uh, uh, slot. But uh, again, there you can see 100 uh, up to uh, 99, down to 99.6% of delivery, which is very good. And the same here when you look at the ITSM server availability. So I think I think all is, is in place. You know, people that are calling in and uh, and that are consuming the various services, they are getting a very good service uh, compared to the service level agreement that uh, that had been signed. So, uh, Chair, I will stop it at this point. This is all that we had in terms of the, in terms of the presentation from us on, on how we support. Thank you, Chair. All right. I think thanks to Tule. I guess, Chair, then, as we hand over to you, uh, perhaps the key principles, Chair, we want to um, perhaps uh, inform the committee on. 
is that one CETA has already started the development of the of the integrated solution, including the benefits related uh, solutions. So that work we have already done. And as we've also discussed with the DG even yesterday, we are coming, we are continuing committing putting resources in the development with an understanding that before the end of this month, there will be at least a proper governance document, proper contract signed between us and DMV, but also DMV will do what they need to do from their side to ensure that the, the sign-off on the deliverables, those basic things of the government um, uh, are managed. We are also giving commitment from CETA that says even if they don't have the full financials for this financial year, we are even willing to stretch it where other things can even be paid for in the next financial year. We will make the resources available from CETA. It's just governance, Chair, more than anything else. Well, I suspect one of your questions will be, what has delayed this thing since 2017? And the simplest answer is horrible governance from both parties. And we are now saying this can only be delivered if between myself and the DG from the top leadership perspective, we ensure there is proper governance of this solution. Maybe, Chair, the last question I suspect you might answer is, but there is a new proposed bill that will also define who is a veteran, what is the main step. And but CETA, you are continuing to develop a registration solution without that being finalized. That is also something we'll be discussing uh, with DMV because the current solution is not based on the proposed bill. So we'll then need to see specifically on your registration module. At what point do we stop that? so that we can then ensure that the requirements that will come from the revised bill are also integrated into the solution that we are developing. But we are giving commitment from the CETA side in terms of the work we are willing to do, even at risk from CETA to ensure that this thing happens. I will stop there, Chair, and then we will take whatever questions you have. It's more about partnership. We are all government entities. I am not doing this to make money, as I've explained, to military veterans, but I need to pay salary. As long as I have commitment uh, from them, signed, not talk. As long as I have signed commitment on what they will do, but more than money, as long as I have commitment on governance, that we will both meet monthly, will receive reports, will understand what the backlogs are, and both of us we will do what we need to do to clear those things so that they can be progressed. As CETA, I can commit, I will come and account to this committee, as and when you need me, I will be here, because we have commitment from CETA to, to, to support the department. I thank you, Chair, I will stop here, and then we will answer your questions with my colleagues. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Uh, th thank you, thank you very much uh, for, for the presentation. Uh, uh, Mr. Kanyise, uh, your team, and uh, the DTG. Uh, I will now hand over to honorable members to interact with the, uh, the presentation. Uh, I will uh, then uh, wait for honorable members to indicate by raising their hands on the platform. Uh, so that uh, we can interact with uh, this uh, particular presentation from CETA. Or, or maybe before I, General Mukwebi, uh, maybe let me give you an, an opportunity before I take honorable members. Uh, so you give a perspective from, from DMV because uh, this th this solution is meant to to assist your department uh, to address the challenges that uh, we have been uh, have been identified and uh, you have been stuck with them for quite some time in terms of resolving uh, the database challenges thank thanks sir, honorable chair from the uh, dmv side that was probably before my time. I suppose a similar presentation was made that was before 2018 to this body. 
And uh, of course, commitments and promises were made. And uh, when there was a break, after I've joined in in terms of what has been indicated in the presentation, part of the break was from the DMV, realizing that we're not moving ahead. And we felt that if we go out into the private sector, we might find people be able to assist us to get what we want. But the issue of the CETA Act, which was during the time of uh, the DG in the department, which was Mr. Robert Nkunya, became an issue, which then tied us down to CETA. Uh, the presentation and what is being explained and the time frame and the promises, they sound good. I've heard them before. Even to the gentleman who was uh, in charge of CETA before, uh, Mr. Kese. It was not even a year then, it was question of a month. And that was a promise. But before two months came to an end, the gentleman was out of uh, CETA. So, because the CETA Act get quoted, we are tied with CETA, we've got nowhere to go, but probably whether they've got the capacity and the capability to do what we are told, we will then have to wait for this financial year and go ahead. So that's, that's the kind of the experience one has had with CETA for the past three years. And this uh, integrated database management uh, system we're looking for is one of the critical and success factors for the DMV to do justice in terms of service level. I rest my question. Thank you. Yeah, th thank you, General Mukwebi. Uh... Let me give uh, honorable members uh, an opportunity now. Uh, I'm not seeing any hand just yet. It's unlike uh, honorable Mare is in the meeting. Yes, I am in a meeting. Do you miss me? Do you want me to speak? Uh, yeah, yes, you must speak. It's unlike you. <laughs> now I'm giving other people an op opportunity as well. <laughs> also, uh, Kanyisa, uh, you are noted, but you'll come at the end. I'm giving this opportunity to honorable members, then you'll come, you'll come in. Yeah, honorable Mare. Uh, okay, no, I've got nothing to add. I uh, I support my colleague, uh, Honorable Shalembe, and he has, uh, he has expressed all the points that I wanted to raise. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, Honorable Shalembe. Yeah, Chairperson, um, maybe uh, let us accept that uh, for members, I mean, to keep silent on this, uh, on this item, you know, we as members of parliament, what we want to see is to see, I mean, uh, deliveries, I mean, uh, being made available, I mean, uh, to the military veterans. Now, the presentation is good, and you have heard what uh, General Mukwebe has said just now. The presentation was done before, but the issues that are, I mean, uh, affecting military veterans seems to be not being addressed. So now I think the presentation is good. But what we are looking at now is when are we going to see the actual deliveries that we want in the military veteran? Well, the presentation will say it is good, but is it delivering or is just a presentation to say one, two, three, four, five? I'm not uh, trying to undermine the presentation, Chairperson. It is good, but take note of what the General MQM has said. Now, Let's see uh, what's going to happen. But for, for us to have an input right now on this, this seems to be difficult because the presentation was clear. These are the progress being made. That's where they are going. But I will be happy, uh, Chairperson, when the actuals are being seen because, I mean, five, year, five years is just getting closer now for us as this uh, committee. What will happen now if these things does not happen again? The next committee to come in the next term will be, I mean, uh, listening you know, to the same presentation.
But for us to be happy, I think you as a chairperson, you will be happy when you see military veterans are happy. How they do it, whether but we want the actual the chairperson. Thank you. Yeah, th thank you, Honorable Shalem. Before I hand over to Mr. Uh, Kanise, uh, the the input made by General Mukwebit's uh, Warisam, uh, it paint a, a a picture that uh, seemed to suggest that uh, uh, this exercise has been uh, they have been through, but uh, there are no tangible outcomes out of these exercises. So we 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 begin to be worried because uh, one of our concern with uh, uh, this kind of uh, presentations, uh, boardroom presentation, is that they do not necessarily translate to the output that we, we, we envisage. And that is a problem because uh, as we are speaking, uh, not so long military veterans have taken to the street because uh, there is a slow movement in terms of delivery of what is uh, actually uh, supposed to be due to them as, uh, as, as benefits. And one of the challenges that the, the DMV is seized with is uh, with regard to the database, because uh, they are unable to move effectively and efficiently uh, because uh, they are not getting the database right. And it is a matter that has been uh, stuck with the department for quite some time. I was impressed when uh, this presentation was made. Uh, I thought it will uh, turn things around. But uh, upon hearing uh, General Mukwebu's uh, assertion is that uh, uh, this might be impressive on, on paper, uh, but uh, it's neither here nor there in terms of uh, the action that must be undertaken. Uh, and it becomes worrisome because if, if we are going to move with that uh, 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 on that uh, uh, pedestal, or things are moving in that uh, in that fashion, uh, then we are going to have a serious problem. Meaning that uh, we might uh, have to meet again, and we will not hear any progress. But the presentation will seem uh, uh, glamorous as they they appear. Uh, maybe, Mr. Kanyisa, if you can uh, respond to those uh, 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 points made and take us into confidence uh, as to how best are we going to resolve this challenge. And I know it's not only your challenge. Uh, it, it, takes, it will take two departments to tangle in this regard in order to resolve this matter. But uh, we are very much worried, I must indicate, from what we have heard from General Mukwebi, it, uh, uh, it then does not give us the confidence that uh, your presentation has, uh, has uh, 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 pictured to us. Over to you. Uh, I'm not sure whether I must take it back to DDG or straight to Mr. Kanye. Uh, okay, so, no, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. Should I continue? Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. I can, I can also commit to you as the executive caretaker for Zeta. I am very worried with the statements that have been uttered by uh, the acting DJ. And perhaps I was very diplomatic, Chair, uh, when I was saying it is governance that has caused all of this problem. And you explain it takes two to tell. The cleaning of the database is the full responsibility of DMV. And DMV will have to account to this court in terms of when they will make the clean database available and then over to CETA for CETA to implement and put it into the system that CETA is developing on their behalf. And Chair Perez, so that committee uh, is not about presentations, it's not about us giving you nice presentations. I would even just go further to say Perez, both DMV and data 
should give quarterly reports to this committee in terms of how far we are on the development of the system. We will certainly do that as leader. On the deadlines, I'm, I'm so that sure you understand, I was putting it as an administrator for a two-year period. I'm here to deliver on what I'm asked to do. And the system we are asked to, de to develop for DMV is a very simple system compared to systems that we have developed uh, for data for a lot of other client departments. But we need to ensure basic governance things are done. At this point, we are developing a solution without a contract with DMV. And as I've explained to yourself, I will continue to do that work because I also expect that the MV will finalize contractual and government issues within the next two weeks. And as CETA chair, I am saying we will account, if need be chair, every quarter to the committee on how far we are on developing that, which I am saying for CETA was doing. And I can also confirm to the committee, we've also put in dedicated resources, but I will make those available when the contract is signed. Because I can't put more resources when I do not have a signed contract between myself and DMV. I am doing everything at this point at a risk, at a possible loss to theater. But we give you direct commitment, and I have an executive for delivery who is here, Mr. Sangani, is sitting with me here in the room. And we will chair, so that I'm clear, we will account, Honorable Shilembe, I take your point very seriously, because it's not about promises. It's about delivery. So when we say the registration module will be ready by December, we need even not to give you a report. We need to showcase it to you. We need to say, come and see, this is a registration module which is live, which is happening. So we're saying we're testing it in quarter three, meaning beyond October. By October, we should be saying this is developed. It is here. This is the functionality. The department is now doing what we call it user acceptance testing. So from a CETA side chair, I am saying we will do that. But I but but I'm coming to this meeting, Chair, to say I want to collaborate with the department. I do not want to come to Parliament to say CETA is doing this, the MV is not doing this. I want us to come as one. Because we are both committing on what is it that we need to do to yourself. And Chair, I can confirm I'm here not because the ad says you must do this. We are here to work with them because we are committing as data to, to assist them. And we will, Chair, make the necessary resources available. And I can confirm on those things you've seen, they are green. Where we've said we have done that work, we will even show because we have done those things um, already. We will show evidence, if needs be, Chair, of what is it that we have done. I don't like PowerPoint presentations. I'm a developer. I would prefer we show you uh, solutions that we're already developing. And yes, on behalf of data, we are giving that commitment, Chair. And we will, every quarter, if needs be, Chair, we will prepare a board um, that show you what we have developed jointly between us and DMV by then. So you do have that commitment from me as an accounting officer of data. Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Kanise, for for the commitment, and uh, I I hope I hope uh, your team and uh, the team from DMV led by General Mukwebi, uh, you would uh, after this meeting we are pleading with you to arrange a meeting and agree on terms and uh, finalize whatever documentation that we have finalized and uh, we will concede. Probably uh, the next quarter we'll have to call you uh, so that you come and present to us progress with regard to, to, to this uh, partnership uh, and the solution that you are developing for them. And uh, we are we are also urging you, General Mukwebi, and your team to also play ball and ensure that uh, uh, this becomes a success because uh, it can continue to be correct that uh, 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 the progress is delayed. Uh, government entities or department are pointing fingers at each other, 
uh, whilst there is absolutely nothing that is stopping you to sit uh, and discuss and come up with a solution to address these challenges because we can't prolong this thing any further. Mm -hmm. As I've indicated that uh, beneficiaries out there uh, are waiting. They have taken to the street now with a presidential intervention which was necessitated by uh, them becoming impatient with uh, the inability of the department to deliver what is uh, 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 meant for them or what do we can uh, 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 say it is uh, rightfully theirs in terms of uh, those benefits that uh, should be given to them. So we will uh, leave it at that and resolve that uh, you must go and uh, the team of uh, Mr. Kanila, the, the uh, General Mukwebi as the DG, you must meet and ensure that uh, there is smooth running and we will call you again and you must not come as two entities, you must come as, uh, as one to give a progress uh, presentation to this committee. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think... Uh, uh, you CETA might be might be released because I think the next item will still uh, chairperson. Yes, uh, Honorable Shalembe. Yes, before I mean, chairperson, before I mean CETA, I mean is released. You know, I I think now you can see because now, as he says now that the statement by Chairman uh, Kwebe is worrisome. It shows that now the relationship between the two is not good. Two, I think maybe, I mean, uh, for G General Mkwebe, so that, I mean, we understand uh, his background. If maybe he can prepare a written, I mean, response to us, like the issue of the payment to CETA in 2017 to 2019, how much did they pay? Was it value for money? Because now, if you look at that, what if uh, Mkwebe is worried about maybe what, what the DMV is paying is not a uh, value for money from a uh, what uh, CETA is doing. If maybe a person in the next meeting uh, or General Mkwebo prepares maybe sort of a response to us to say, I mean, supporting his statement, why he is uh, not happy with the service uh, from CETA. We are talking about money and you, you remember a chairperson, our budget is very, very limited. Now, if he says that now we need to look at uh, how much is going to cost, I mean, the department if CETA is redoing what he was doing in 2017 to 2019. Let's not live like that. But I think uh, Jeremy Huebu must support his statement that is it value for money, what they have done in 2017 to 2019. Now, how much is it going to cost the department for this a new, I mean, uh, exercise by the CETA? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, uh, Honorable Shalembe. I see the hand of uh, General Mukwebi. Thanks, Honorable. Yeah, thanks, uh, Honorable Chair. I just want to indicate that uh, there is no really a uh, challenge between the two of us, not the, between the two organizations. And uh, even this presentation, we discussed uh, the two of us. And I find nothing wrong with the presentation. It's a very good presentation. But what I am saying, uh, is that the the history of where we are and where we've been, uh, at least, uh, is something we needed to be explained. Going forward, I do not have a problem, but the question is going to be delivering on what is required based on the presentation. And working us to, uh, together and collaborating is not a problem, but delivering is an issue. So that's, that's, uh, I just wanted to indicate that part. Thanks. All right, thank you. As, as I have uh, made a, my concluding remarks, uh, they they still stand. And uh, as you have indicated, General Mukwebi, that uh, your worry is on delivery. And I think uh, my my concluding remarks uh, also covers your worry to say you must go back uh, and meet with the team uh, from SETA and raise your concerns there so that in the next meeting when we call you to come and account to this portfolio committee, you'll be able to, to give us a way forward out of your engagement with them uh, and, and the confidence that uh, uh, shall have been uh, uh, built out of those engagements, whether 
you are still discomfort or you are comfortable with them that uh, those delivery will then uh, be delivered accordingly or or not but uh, for now let's uh, allow you space and sita to engage and uh, sort out whatever uh, issues that uh, sita has raised and whatever issues that we have raised and you'll come back to us with uh, with uh, something uh, 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 tangible and progressive to resolve uh, the challenges that uh, we have uh, you have both identified these two entities that must uh, collaborate and ensure that uh, uh, the solutions is delivered uh, timelessly and uh, matters that you are you are sitting with and uh, have been a challenge for some time so must uh, then begin to be resolved. Uh, on that note, uh, thank you very much. I think uh, CETA can be released and then we'll move to the next uh, item. We are not doing that uh, well with time, but I think uh, we are left. Uh, Brian, if you can just uh, uh, fly to that agenda again so we see the, the next item. Thank you, Chair. We will knock off at CETA. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Uh, the department is going to be logging off as well at uh, DCDT. Okay, no, thank you. Thank you, DDG. Yeah, I think uh, we we are moving now to to the fifth item, which is uh, uh, the briefing, briefing DMV on uh, progress of the presidential testimony on military veteran. Uh, over to you, I'm not sure. Over to you, General Mukwebe. Thank you, Honorable Chair. May I ask uh, Brian to be assisted with the uh, uh, to fly presentation? Okay. Yes. Brian, you. can you start on your side? Yes, thank you. You may proceed, General Mukwebe. Thank you, Chair. Next slide. That's the uh, outline of the presentation, Chair, in terms of the aim, the background, introduction. Then we'll, one will talk to the work stream and the purpose of those work streams, and also share the progress up to today. And then also we, one will highlight uh, the issue of the various meetings uh, with the presidential task team with the provinces, or which has already been undertaken. Thanks, next slide. <clears throat> yeah, the aim is just to appraise the portfolio committee on defense and nutrition on progress of the presidential task team on military veterans. Thank you. <clears throat> Without uh, really reading what's said, uh, it's just to say the challenges which have been facing the department since uh, its establishment and the cries of the military veterans with regards to the quality of service. Letters have been all the way written to the minister, written to the office of the president. And finally, in 2020, they started intensifying. And then on the 10th of November, then there was a march by the military veterans. That group of uh, marchers uh, was mainly coming from the liberation struggle uh, background. Uh, they are mainly from uh, APLA, Azanla, and MK. Then they presented their memorandum to the president. But this happened when the president has already set up uh, a task team, which uh, consists of uh, the deputy president, the minister in the presidency, the minister of defense and military veterans, and the deputy minister. That, that's the task team. And uh, lately, uh, with the passing on of uh, Mr. Jackson Tim, uh, the acting minister has been brought on board, uh, Minister Mkumbuzo and Chabi. So that, that's the uh, next slide. So that's the team. Then, <clears throat> then the presidential task team did sit, then uh, they decided that they would at least uh, bring on board um, all 
the various association to at least uh, to state their challenges, including this grouping of the liberation struggle of veterans. And of course, the premiers were brought on board. The various ministries in the government departments like Home Affairs, Human Settlement, Water and Sanitation, National Treasury, Public Enterprise, Justice and Constitutional Development, Correctional Services, Rural Development and Land Reform, Social Development, Transport, and the Department of Small uh, Business and Development. All those departments were brought on board uh, to participate uh, in this exercise, mainly the officials. Thank you. Next slide. And then uh, a technical task team was set up. And uh, the technical task team mainly consists of uh, the advisor to the deputy president in the name of uh, Le retired Lieutenant General Mpejo. And then uh, there is uh, also a chief director in the office of the uh, minister in the presidency, uh, and Mr. Moses Kosana. And then the chief of staff in the Ministry of Defense and the Mr. Mutumi is part of that. And the officials in the office of deputy minister are also part of that. Then the uh, acting DG is part of that technical task team and is chairing the technical team. Then once the technical task team was uh, at least uh, set up and running, then it was required to establish work streams so that uh, uh, this document, which is called a consensus document, based on the discussion with the presidential task team had with the military veterans through their associations, uh, a document was finally signed on the 22nd of December 2020. And that's a document which presently is being at least uh, implemented, trying to address those concerns. And uh, of course, the deputy president has also indicated that uh, it is important that uh, the cabinet is informed uh, through a cabinet memo with regards to existence of this. And also the work can also be coordinated with the various provinces to make sure that this can be organized within the provinces and decentralized from provincial level to district municipality, including uh, local municipalities. Thanks, next slide. There's been uh, seven work streams which have been set up. The first one speaks to the legislative review. Mainly it's looking at the, to develop implementation plans aimed at addressing the policy legislative issues which have been raised by the military veterans. The second one speaks to organizational redesign, which is meant to align the DMV organization structure to its legislative mandate, strategy, and business processes. The third one speaks to socioeconomic support uh, to facilitate meaningful interaction with the social cluster and facilitate the identification of short to medium term and long term uh, programs of government to benefit military veterans. The issues of the fourth one speak to data base verification, cleansing and enhancement. That means to develop, is meant to develop a project plan for an accelerated, accelerated completion of this uh, verification process. The fifth one speaks to heritage and memorialization. The purpose of which is to facilitate a collaborative research of best practices with relevant countries around uh, the matters of heritage, memorialization, and liberation uh, veterans. And also this uh, work stream is also tasked to do a feasibility study with regards to exhumation and repatriation of the mortal remains of the fallen military veterans or ex-combatants uh, in foreign countries, where it will look at the policy in terms of the various countries, and then come back and propose uh, a policy at government level, which will be speaking to the issue of uh, exhumation and repair of the motor 
remains of the fallen ex-combatants, including in Kenya. Thank you. Next slide. The sixth one speaks to pension and benefits, which is meant to review and update the pension actual inquiry undertaken by the GMV in 2015 in order to determine the appropriate military veterans quantum in line with the inflation. That uh, benefit in terms of policy, uh, it's, uh, it is uh, being finalized but also there's work which is being done towards that end. Communication is that to make sure that the, the task and the activities which are undertaken by the presidential task team are communicated and the military return themselves, the public at large is kept abreast of uh, the developments with regards to the military veterans affairs. Next slide. Now, in terms of the issues being raised uh, and the progress is the conclusion of the memorandum of understanding between the department, the national and uh, provincial uh, government departments and other state entities. I would venture to say that is a uh, work in progress uh, in terms of uh, quite a number of government departments. Uh, there are agreements already and uh, in other areas, there were no uh, memorandum of understanding. The provincial uh, government of Houten, Eastern Cape, uh, that one has also been uh, finalized uh, already. So we're at a stage of uh, implementation of those uh, kind of issues. Thank you. Next slide. With education support, one of the decisions which was at least uh, taken was the issue of uh, GMV was directed that we should at least uh, lift the moratorium on new application for education support. And that was done. And about 2,500 new um, applications were received, which uh, are being processed. And of course, the issue of payments of school fees and reimbursement of fees that were paid by the parents uh, we were requested that we should accelerate that process. Then the involvement and the support of the provincial government has been identified as a critical success factor. Now, for the information of the uh, committee, we as a department of approach, the department of defense was there at least a second that uh, about uh, five officers uh, to assist in this regard, more so on education support. And uh, also we have linked up with each one of basic education and they have also availed somebody as part of the socioeconomic um, cluster. And we are looking at the means and ways where we can pick it back on their system, where their system is able to tell us a child of a military veteran, once you give the name of the child and the school and the province, that they can link that with the school and also have a visibility um, of whether the child is at school or not at school. And also to deal with the issue of once these kids are known that we are at least the sponsors, uh, as a responses of these kids, the schools won't be dismissing and there'll be directive coming from the Department of Basic Education to make sure that the district officials uh, speak to the principal of the school concern so that at least the ease of payment should not lead to the kids not being at class. So we have an engaged on that one. The database, uh, its uh, purpose is just to deal with the verification of that, those files, which is 5,921. They've already started with those files they're concentrating in Houghton and Military Veterans Association have been uh, brought on board as observers. But again, uh, there were other members like the Liberation Struggle War Veteran, uh, which are the ones of those, who, uh, among those who marched to the presidency. Uh, now they are also at least having a rep there so that they can also follow the developments based on the discussion. 
Thank you. Next one. The issue of the means test. Military veterans often view that uh, all these benefits should not be means tested because uh, when they took up arms against uh, the uh, government of the, uh, of the time, there was no question of means test, no anything. And therefore they are entitled, all of them to get this. But of course, there's a question of the act and then this has uh, been referred to that web extreme, which is looking at the amendment of the act. Uh, and of course, there is also uh, inclusion of national treasury there and our finance division, because uh, they are financial implication before those kind of decisions are made. Uh, it's uh, very critical to say, if that's a route which government is proposing to date, what is going to be the impact and the implication with regards to the funding that exercise and sustainability of that. The restructuring of the GMV, the Department of Public Service Administration, National Treasury, Defense and GMV, they've already said, they've looked at what has been done in the past, and they've updated and confirmed the service delivery model. They've looked at the uh, functional structures. Now, as a department uh, of defense, I mean, uh, of military veterans, my apologies, uh, it has come to our understanding that now, once you've got the functional structures, you then have to do a detailed work then to come up with an occasional structure. And unfortunately, we do not have that capacity or capability even within uh, the other sister departments. Therefore, the route which has been now uh, agreed upon is to go the route of uh, finding a service provider just to finish what is uh, remaining so that we can be able at least uh, to come up with a proposed structure to the uh, department for consultation in public service administration once it's agreed national treasure for funding, then finally for approval. Thanks. Next slide. The problem of health to the dependence of military veterans. This is one of the issues which was raised by the military veterans. And uh, again, the, we have not moved as we thought, because again, it goes back to the act, because the act is specific about who must be assisted and supported with regards to the health services. And uh, it was a similar thing with housing uh, for dependents because we once, at least uh, last year, 2020, tried to assist the dependents of military veterans. But a legal advice which was provided to the minister is that, that uh, if the minister tries to do that, then the department will be acting uh, ultra virus. So we were warned. So hence, therefore, we looking at the actual amendment of the act. Employment opportunities, uh, military veterans, uh, are at least uh, some of them are healthy, not that old and they are also capable in terms of working. So therefore they were saying that they need to be at least taken on board. And then discussing with the uh, Department of Housing, they have at least uh, employed looking at, uh, after the discussion, uh, about 500 of those military veterans receiving something like 5,000 a month, where they are at least uh, working with the various uh, schools within the Houting with in relation to the issues of COVID-19 and supporting and assisting them. Thank you, next slide. Then there was an issue of uh, presidential, presidential pardon and the expansion of uh, criminal records of military veterans. And uh, the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development has uh, at least uh, provided the office of the president with files which speaks to these various individuals who have applied for this presidential going back uh, some time. And also they were then requested that they should also provide uh, the, the list of individuals who are eligible for a presidential pardon and the reason why, as well as to provide a list of uh, those they think should not be considered for presidential pardon. So this work is work uh, where the deputy minister in the um, Department of Justice and Question has got a committee which is looking at this and trying at least uh, to assist in terms of what is doable uh, with regards to this issue. The 
issue of serial ten, military partners are saying they accept the issue of uh, 50 square meters, uh, but which is presently what they are uh, entitled to. They are saying it is too small. They are looking for decent housing because they say their families are big and uh, also the quality of the houses uh, which are being built are uh, a question mark. And they were also looking at uh, houses according to them, which are available uh, a part of houses which are empty, sometimes uh, falling apart, some illegally occupied. Uh, and then uh, they were looking for those houses so that they can at least uh, be allocated those houses. So the GMV and Department of Public uh, Works and Infrastructure, we have engaged, and they are looking at the inventory of those houses, especially around uh, Tswane, uh, but uh, right through the country. So there's an exercise, exercise which is going on. Public Works, of course, they indicated to us that, uh, yes, it is true, some of those houses are illegally occupied, but uh, also they are looking at uh, means and ways of uh, making sure that uh, they deal with that, uh, with the, at least, um, the SAPS and uh, the relevant uh, uh, security structures. But they still have their own uh, priorities in the main, but they will uh, assist us where they can. Next slide. Pension. Well, uh, the, there's been at least uh, an ongoing uh, interaction as it was indicated. And uh, working by this uh, work stream, uh, they've involved the agencies, GIPA, GPF, and uh, SASA is part of that, Social, Department of Social Development is part of that. And uh, they had a meeting, I think the last meeting was last, last week, where they were looking at exactly the quantum and looking at who might be eligible for this. And of course, uh, that financial uh, sub. Uh, set uh, of this uh, work stream was looking at uh, the uh, again affordability of uh, this exercise. Thank you. Next slide. With the social relief of distress, uh, the issue of 350 and the issue of uh, a top up of 8050, that is an ongoing one, and uh, about 900. 80 military veterans have received uh, that uh, amount of money as a top up. And the DMV will spend about 5.6 uh, million as part of that. And in terms of the composition of uh, who these people are, 54% are coming in the main from the non statutory forces. And then again, 46% from the statutory forces. And uh, the question of the extension by government of that has led, of course, uh, us also extending in terms of uh, paying out this uh, social relief of distress in terms of a top up. Then there was an, also a decision that uh, the other people who are also destitute but uh, do not qualify according to SASA must be also taken on board. But in doing that, uh, it was said we must make sure that uh, we. Uh, we observe the necessary prescripts. And that has led in us engaging quite a number of um, government departments and agencies to check uh, the 1,200 application which we received. And we captured the out of those, about 614 of them. And of course, we had to take them through uh, UIF, GPA, and SASA. And uh, of course, in certain instances, or most cases, people are getting either a special pension or some, it is quite clear, they are living on the grants of the children. And then uh, some is not quite clear and some are employed. So we then, uh, with SASA, SAS, then said no, in terms of the commission, like they can help us, but on condition that the individuals, in terms of the protection of personal information, that they give us the authority for SAS to read it, that kind of information. So we are now have sent those forms to the individual so that they can feel and give us the authority to engage us on their behalf so that we can pay them this 1,200. Thanks, next slide. The amendment of the Military Veterans Act has been presented. I won't repeat that, share with your permission.
in terms of the heritage, uh, the various uh, uh, government departments, Department of Sports, Arts and Culture is part of that process, including the uh, various agencies as depicted. And of course, the draft MOU is in place where we expect that it's going to be signed off by the two DJs to deal with the actual implementation uh, of this uh, exercise. Think next set. With the issue of the capacitation of the uh, department, which speaks more and on the issue of strategic leadership, the post of the DG with all what has been done, we're just now awaiting for it to serve before cabinet, and then we will then get to know probably before the end of this month the outcome of that. With the two deputy directors general, uh, those posts which were advertised, people responded. Now, Emma Stalis has been compiled, and uh, next week, then it's going to be the issue of shortlisting. And then, based on the outcome of the shortlisting, it will be the issue of um, interviews, and then uh, take that one forward. The other chief to their two posts of chief directors, which are vacant, so they are advertised so that we can also fill those. The issue of empowerment and skilling of military veterans. Then there is a, a program which is uh, going on to try and assist uh, military veterans in terms of sewing. In that, uh, in that program, we are dealing with uh, a company which is in the defense industry sector called Unsold, and also what working together in that exercise with Fountain City College to make sure that at least the military veterans are empowered and trained. Some of those military veterans are paid by the department, and are paid for, for that exercise by the department, but some of those are paid for by the company. This is going to be the direction we're taking, going to introduce the issues of uh, incubation and mentorship after they've finished their training, which is supposed to be six months. Okay, the, that was uh, one of those which one at least I would mention, but there are other programs which speak to the artisan training, computer training. I won't be going to those uh, details. Thanks, Chet. Next slide. Now this, uh, in terms of the presidential task team, they have already had uh, meetings with two provinces, one being Houdin and the other one being the Eastern Cape. Now, in terms of the highlights uh, of the uh, Houting uh, interaction, it was the issue of uh, housing, which have been allocated to military veterans. And then uh, also it was the issue of the employment or job opportunities for military veterans. It, it was also the assistance of uh, military veterans in terms of further education and training and the recognition of prior learning of these military veterans and assistance of uh, companies in terms of awarding contracts about 10 of those of military veterans. And they are also awarding uh, bursaries to, uh, to military veterans, about 47 of those have benefited out of that exercise. Uh, in terms of land release program, about 90 military veterans we are informed they have at least uh, benefited uh, in terms of uh, that exercise. Thank you, next slide. That was Houting. The Eastern Cape uh, also indicated in terms of uh, the, they are looking at trying to develop an ID system for military veterans, which will be unique, so that at least uh, they can be able to access uh, various health uh, facilities. That's what they were saying. Then also the question of uh, houses built for military veterans, they've indicated issues of uh, supporting military veterans with regards to procurement. Uh, they've indicated that uh, they got that kind of percentage, but they are looking at least uh, increasing that 0.46% to 0.72%. Uh, by the end of 20, January 2021. So there is at least a commitment 
uh, in terms of supporting military veterans uh, from the perspective of empowering them to be able to be self-sufficient. I think that's uh, what one can uh, indicate from the provinces. Uh, so these are the only two provinces which were visited virtually by the presidential task team. There is a program uh, in place to visit the remaining provinces by the presidential task team. Thanks, next slide. So this is the formation and the reason behind and the composition and the activities of the presidential task team. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, General Mutebi. I'll now invite uh, honorable members to interact with the uh, presentation. We have long I awaited for this presentation. Uh, I see the hand of uh, Honorable Shilembe, uh, followed by Honorable Hwasi, in that order. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Um, uh, let me, I mean, uh, appreciate um, the presentation, you know, the way it is presented to us, uh, it is helping a lot. Um, Chairperson, let me start by, I mean, uh, expressing uh, what you call, um, uh, anyway, I'm happy that, I mean, uh, what I see when it comes to a uh, housing that um, 500 uh, military veterans, you know, were assisted uh, to have uh, some sort of uh, jobs in those schools uh, around housing. Uh, I think the 5,000 rent a month is something that is good. And I would have loved, I mean, uh, the same if it was uh, implemented in other provinces, you know. But I, 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 I'm really, I mean, uh, so happy uh, to see such an initiative and the support from uh, what I see in Gauteng. Uh, what I, 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 I need uh, from uh, uh, General Mukwebi, you know, just the clarity when it comes to the issue of uh, what you call a uh, um, working relationship between um, the, the three spheres of government. So which I think uh, is national, provincial and the local government. But I want to uh, go uh, to the issue of uh, local government. I think uh, local government, you know, are the only ones, I mean, uh, who, are, who are very close, I mean, uh, to the people on the ground. And uh, for that, I mean, to be possible to access, I mean, or to have that good relationship, now the military veterans must have a close uh, working relationship with uh, the local municipalities. Now looking to, I mean, uh, the issue of, I mean, um, um, volume of work uh, to, be, to be performed, it might be uh, difficult when it comes to that all local municipalities must have the same service. But I was checking uh, with uh, Director General uh, Acting uh, Umkwebi. What, what is the status now of uh, municipalities in that regard? Uh, as he's saying now, they are starting now to expand to work. I mean, um, are they uh, supportive? Uh, if they are supportive, what is the possibility of assisting military veterans like uh, accessing, I mean, um, uh, facilities like uh, faxing, like photocopies, those stuff, maybe uh, some uh, officials from the municipality being able to refer them or sort of, because uh, some of the military veterans uh, may be uh, in those uh, areas, but do not know where to go, who to meet. What will be the protocol that will be given to the, uh, to the military veterans on the ground that uh, should you have a problem uh, in Eastern Cape, for instance, you have a municipality of Bizan. Uh, is there anything that they can get, I mean, from uh, the, the Bizan? And if that is difficult, we have district municipalities. Isn't that maybe faster in the meantime to say, 
military veterans can go to district offices rather than, I mean, going to local, because it's going to be a long process if I look at that. I'm just checking which one I think uh, Mukwebe can assist. I'm happy with the presentation. I can see where he's going, but uh, when it comes to reality of military veterans being able to get much information in the local municipality, is there any progress so far with uh, the working relationship with uh, municipalities? If there's any what are the, which are those municipalities that have started working with them? Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. I'm partly covered by Mr. Shalembe because I was going to suggest that the initiative made in Gauteng must be also extended to other provinces. It must not only be as if Gauteng is the only province that is serviced. And the question that maybe I would want to ask is, do we actually see a satisfactory progress? For example, in the allocation of houses, looking at what we have of military veterans at the database. Yeah, maybe one can refer to say, we are looking at the, the value for money. Is it, what is on the presentation? Is it tangible? Do we see it? Does it make difference when you go down to the ground? I'm asking this chairperson because I am from the Northwest province for argument's sake. I don't see anything happening. We have family members that are military veterans and that are getting nothing out of the department or any assistance from the military veteran. So one would ask, yes, we get presentations every time, but do we see what the presentation is covering when we go down to our communities? And does the community actually have information of where to start when they need to get information about all these other benefits that they qualify for? And Chairperson, my request would be that maybe sometime we must get a presentation with breakdowns for example, we must have in our bed, we must say in our database, we have so many military veterans in the Northwest. And in terms of housing, this is how many that we have assisted. A breakdown of every province and a breakdown must include the benefits that they got and the assistance that they got from the military veterans in order for us to say, yes, indeed, we are moving forward. And also, Chair, the issue of the skills development programs and the issue of the employment program. It can say, yes, we are appreciating that at least in Houghton something is happening or the military veterans will be able to be assisted in Houghton. The 5,000 trends makes a difference, but it can't be that it is only one out of nine provinces. I think maybe we must put more effort because maybe it will also decrease the burden that we get from military veterans for as long as they get something that can sustain themselves on a monthly basis. It's less of a burden to us. Thank you, Chairperson. Yeah, th thank you. Thank you, Honorable Lofase. Uh, I'll hand over to General Mukwebi. I've not. Oh, Honorable uh, Bukas. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, mine is, is is the same on the provinces, and I I really want to. There we there is some progress, and we acknowledge and we are glad that there is progress. But um, uh, I would like to see the program uh, to the other provinces in time frames that they have for other provinces, because especially like Honorable Lohwasi was saying to those, the Northern Cape and, and, and Northwest, those rural provinces, because it's vast and our military veterans in those rural areas are suffering because for them, for example, to visit a doctor uh, from the place where I stay, if you want to visit a doctor, you must drive almost 163 kilometers and they don't have money. And I urge them to, if possible, speed up the process and engage with municipalities, like Honor Shalembe was saying, because I don't know. I think the first entry for this presidential task must be the, the, 
districts and the local municipalities because they don't have a clue on what is happening, the municipalities especially. And now I'm speaking about those rural areas. So I think they must really speed up the process. Then, Chair, on the social relief and the stress, uh, uh, General Mukwege was saying those who did not qualify for the 350. And I think we are now done with the 350. But what he is reporting now is that they must still verify the outstanding, they uh, verified 640. So for they must still verify the outstanding mm -hmm. before they can make a payment. And I don't think, I think the time for the 350 already passed. But in the in this uh, military veterans, they are still busy. So those people during the, the, the heat of COVID, they did not receive anything. So, so how far are that process now? Are we still standing today on only the 650 who is verified or what is the, what, and what is the time frame to, to, uh, for payments to be made for, for those people? Thank you, Chair. Yeah, thank, thank you, Honorable Bukas. Uh, I think it was the last hand. I'll hand over to General Mukwege. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Chair, and thank you, Honorable Members. Uh, the question from the from Honorable Shalembe, in terms of uh, the three years of government, having listened to the two provinces when the presidential task team was engaging with them and and looking at the program, as a technical task team, we took upon ourselves to at least uh, do engagement with the uh, government officials at provincial level under the chairpersonship of a DG of a province. So as to be, uh, especially the one in Popo, indicated to us that he's going to also make it a point that the premier and the MEC speak to the mayors so that at least they can understand this. Therefore, that in terms of office space, in terms of photocopying, in terms of access to facilities, there should be a direction given, uh, a directive given to, to those structures so that they can assist and support military veterans when they are looking for those kind of things. And uh, that would then speak to the actual uh, protocol. And as we visit both by the technical task team and the presidential task team, uh, engaging the provincial government. Per formation, there is a request that they must be represented at least by two individuals, including Samba. So that in this discussion, when then the presidential task team or technical task team comes back to Pretoria, there is an engagement and interaction by the military veterans and the provincial government. And also they understand the direction which is being taken so that themselves at their own level, they can begin to share with their own colleagues and also engage their municipalities so that if there are any challenges or any, at least a reluctance, that can be fed up, fed, uh, feedback can be given uh, to the Office of the Premier. And the Office of the Premiers have been requested to set up structures which speak to the a directorate which service military veterans in the Premier's office. Some are already there, some are not there. But those who are not there, like um, both uh, the Popo and the uh, Free State, they indicated to us in our engagement that in the meantime, they are going to have at least a uh, people nominated just to hold that office, even if it's an additional drop while they are looking at their structures. So that's how, therefore, the protocols and the challenges would be addressed and the access to facilities um, in terms of uh, Mr. Schellenberg's question. The issue of uh, Ms. Lekwasse in terms of best practices, what, what we are doing as we are visiting, we are also sharing with these officials what is it that's being reported and what we think that at least uh, is good examples to follow. And therefore, they can at least engage uh, with their uh, political principal and advise in terms of programs which would change the lives of the military in a meaningful way. So yes, we are engaging and we are sharing uh, those kind of uh, examples. In terms of 
the a presentation when we come back, which speaks to the tangibles, uh, like housing allocation, we will, uh, as far as Northwest is concerned, we'll be able to speak to that when we are at least uh, required, because we've got the information which indicates who are these military veterans, where are they found within Northwest in terms of the different uh, municipalities, and also we've got a, a sense of who their dependents are, and also what is it that they've already accessed in terms of the benefits in the DMV. So that, that presentation can be, can be made. Uh, it's the same with the issue of skills development and empowerment. This is what we are trying to do in terms of sharing uh, with the, first of all, we as a department, we've got our own role to assist military veterans across the country. So we are at least uh, having outreach programs where we go to these provinces. But now we've been doing that on our own. Now it's been at least also uh, directed that to DMV officials, when they go to provinces, they must link up with that uh, uh, military veterans affairs directory in the premier's office, including our own official. So that when we speak to the uh, officials in whatever outreach program we have, we are at least uh, speaking with one voice as national government and provincial government in the presence of the various associations so that they can inform their people. So that's the approach in terms of, uh, again, uh, the not that we must uh, end up in Gauteng, but our province must learn from the Gauteng province. Uh, Honorable Bukas, uh, I think uh, in terms of the program, tomorrow the Tengal Trust team will be going to uh, Northwest, as indicated already, uh, the, that's we will be speaking to the DG. Yes, we know the challenges of the DG there, uh, that somebody is acting and they're in a the process of appointing another one. So, but we've got an appointment. We'll probably, I can just check that one, be able to give a, an accurate figure in terms of where we are. And uh, the in the main, now for us to pay, uh, we need now, because there's an information which the people who seem not to be getting anything but we cannot know whether they are receiving, because that's information they're giving, they are receiving something from someone. The only, or they are doing businesses, but they are not registered, or they've got an uh, alternative income. To make sure we have approached the Department of uh, the South African Revenue Services, so that the individual, and we've written to the individual that they must at least give us permission to give their details so that we can get that information. Once they are cleared there, then we'll be able to pay. So the speed is going to depend on the responses we get from the members, uh, which would be difficult presently until at least we see the responses from the members, uh, what time frames we'll be talking about. But at this stage, we were thinking that things being equal, we should at least uh, by end of this month have visibility of those who have given us the permission to go ahead to consult uh, such African regime services. Thank you very much, Chair. I hope I was audible. Hello? Hello, Chair. Yeah, th thank you, General Mukwebi. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, yeah, thank you for those responses. Uh, I see the hand of Shalembe. I'm not sure it was the hand was raised before. You want to make a follow up, Honorable Shalembe? Honorable an, Shalembe. Yes, it's an old hand, Chairperson. So, oh, um, okay. So please uh, lower, lower it. Is uh, is lowered already? All right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, those are the responses, uh, colleagues. Uh, any follow up? It doesn't seem like there's a a a follow up. Uh, yeah, I think uh, uh, General Mukwebi, the the assertion that uh, colleagues have made it's a very clear one, so that uh, we we approach uh, this matter in a 
in a unitary uh, way so that uh, we don't uh, we must avoid the situation where we'll receive co- uh, complaints from other provinces uh, with regard to to treatment uh, so so to avoid the situation where uh, those in Limpopo or those in other provinces, uh, they don't receive the same treatment as those in Haute. So we must be uh, vigilant and guard against uh, that uh, 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 matter uh, to avoid uh, uh, unnecessary uh, revolt going forward. Because uh, if uh, if Gauteng gets a particular preferential and other provinces, uh, it might not be the intent, but uh, we must try as hard as we can to ensure that uh, whatever uh, agreement you have with the Gauteng government uh, becomes a, a baseline for, for all provinces to ensure that uh, at least Military, but there is uniformity in terms of uh, treating uh, military veterans. I think uh, we we th- there is clarity in terms of that, and we will uh, leave it at that. We will continue to to actually engage with your department to check uh, progress that has been made by by this task team. I think we can pack it at that and uh, and 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 release you, uh, General Mukul. Maybe your last word before you leave. No, thanks. Uh, I take note of the guidance which has been given and also the monitoring and evaluation of what we are trying to do uh, through the presidential task team. So I will also take it back to the ministry and make sure that at least uh, we comply with what's required. Thanks, Chair. And thanks, honourable members. Good afternoon. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you are released, General Mukwebi. Uh, honourable members, we will now be dealing with uh, the last item. I think uh, we'll be dealing with minutes. Uh, am I correct, Brian? If you might fly it, uh, quickly that uh, agenda again, so that uh, uh, I don't just. Uh, uh, deal with items that do not exist. Yes, we will be dealing with the uh, minutes. Uh, the first set of minutes was stated uh, 11 May 2021. Uh, the agenda was briefing by DMV on its uh, 2021 annual performance plan and budget for the very same financial year. Uh, briefing by AMSCO. Uh, yeah. The minutes were the agenda of that day was dealing with those two items. Uh, can we consider? Can we look at the uh, members uh, attended? They are stipulated there. Apology was uh, General Holomisa. Uh, officials attended are reflecting there. And we move to the next uh, page. Yeah. Uh, any comment uh, on this page? The third page. Any comment on the third page? We're moving to the fourth one. We are on the fourth one, moving to the fifth one. Uh, challenges. The sixth page, committee observation. A resolution of the committee. Any comment uh, on the minutes? If none, can we move for the adoption of these minutes? Yeah, Hwase moves for the adoption of the minutes, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Hwase. Any seconder? I second, Chair. 
Thank you, uh, Honorable Bukas. Uh, the meet, meeting, the minutes are duly adopted and seconded. Can we move to the next set of minutes? Brian? Yes, the, the second set of minutes was uh, the minutes of the meeting that was scheduled on the 12th May 2021, consideration and adoption of budget vote uh, uh, 23 and 26. Uh, it indicates uh, attendance there. Can you move down to the next page? Uh, consideration and adoption of the budget vote 23. Uh, the researcher there made presentation. Uh, page three, consideration and adoption of TMV budget vote 26, and move, move down. Uh, resolution of the committee. Uh, and uh, that's all for this set of minutes. Any any correction, any input, honorable members? If none, can we move for the adoptions of this minutes? I move for the adoption, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Bukas. Any seconder? Le Hose seconds, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Lohase. The minutes are duly adopted, uh, moved by Honorable Bukas, seconded by Honorable Lohase. Uh, and I think this brings us to the end of uh, 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 the items as itemized on the agenda. Uh, and that uh, brings us to the end of this meeting. Thank you very much, honorable members and uh, uh, ministry support staff that are still with us in this meeting. Thank you very much. The meeting stand adjourned. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair.